Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 27th of August. Incessant rainfall disrupts normal life in parts of India. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan invites Afghan peace chief for talks. And locals express anger over diversion of rivers in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. And now for all the details. Heavy rainfall continued to lash parts of northern, central and eastern India, causing rivers and streams to swell and creating a flood-like situation. The weather department has predicted there will be no immediate relief as intense rainfall activity is expected for the next four days. Incessant rainfall continued to hit normal life and created flood-like situations in parts of India on Thursday. Heavy rains have pounded northern Jammu and Kashmir over the past few days, causing rivers and streams to swell, resulting in flash floods and leaving residents stranded in the Union territory. Fifteen people were rescued on Wednesday after they were caught in flash floods in Ult River in Katwa district and efforts were still underway by authorities on Thursday to rescue around seven people who were trapped in temporary shelters near the river in Rajbag area. Rescue operation is still going on. They are on the rest platform. They are secure. They are not going to talk about it. Yesterday, there was a lot of water flow. Today, there is a lot of water flow. Today, there is a lot of water flow. The water is receding. But they are still going to reach the water flow. Meanwhile, one child reportedly died in a house collapse in Jashpur in Chhattisgarh as rains lashed several districts of the central Indian state. Fear of floods also loomed large over parts of Odisha as heavy rain triggered by a low-pressure area over the Bay of Bengal battered the eastern state. Low-lying areas were submerged and road links were snapped on Thursday. Weather department has predicted there will be no immediate relief as intense rainfall activity is expected over several parts of north, central and eastern India for the next four days. India's COVID-19 tally crossed 3.3 million mark on Thursday after 75,760 new virus cases were reported in the past 24 hours. At the time when India for most of August has been reporting the highest daily spike in virus cases in the world, a hospital in country's Pune city has kicked off human trials for the potential COVID-19 vaccine. India on Thursday reported 75,760 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, pushing the country's virus tally to over 3.3 million cases, out of which 2,523,771 patients have recovered from the infection, taking the recovery rate to 76.24%. At the time when India for most of August has been reporting the highest daily spike in virus cases in the world, Bharti Vidya Peet Hospital in the country's western Pune city has kicked off human trials for a potential COVID-19 vaccine. The first doses of the vaccine developed in Oxford University and manufactured at the Serum Institute of India were administered to two volunteers who tested negative for COVID-19 and positive for antibodies on Wednesday. excitement that the pandemic situation Meanwhile, amid the growing chorus over whether to conduct the medical and engineering entrance exams of JE Mains and NEET or not, during the COVID-19 pandemic, over 1.4 million admit cards for the entrance tests were downloaded after the National Testing Agency released them on Wednesday. The exams scheduled to be held in September have already been deferred twice in the wake of the pandemic. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and Chairman of Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation Dr. Abdullah Abdullah held a telephonic conversation on Wednesday 
where they discussed bilateral ties and ongoing Afghan peace process. Khan said that there was no military solution of Afghanistan altercation except a political one. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday invited Afghan peace chief Abdullah Abdullah to discuss ways for clearing the path to intra-Afghan dialogue and said Islamabad looked forward to the commencement of the talks at the earliest. Khan, according to his office, called the chairman of Afghan High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah, and invited him to visit Pakistan at the earliest to share perspectives on advancing the Afghan peace process and forging closer ties between the two countries. Abdullah later took to Twitter and said, both leaders during their conversation emphasized the importance of the unique opportunity to reduce violence, start intra-Afghan talks and pursue a path to a dignified and durable peace. The call followed a meeting between Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi and a Taliban delegation, which came as Afghanistan's peace process has stalled over disagreements on a prisoner exchange. Talks between the Taliban and an Afghan government-mandated committee were to be held in Qatari capital Doha following the completion of the prisoner exchange between the two sides. But the completion of the swap has been delayed by disagreements between the two parties. Moving on, locals have expressed concern over the diversion of rivers and damage to the ecology due to construction of hydropower projects in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. They blame Islamabad for rampant destruction of natural resources, which has led to water shortage and climate change in the illegally occupied region. Locals have expressed anger over the proposed Kohala and Azad Patan Hydel Power projects in Pakistan-administered Kashmir to be built by Pakistan and China on River Jhelum in the illegally occupied region. Muzaffarabad, the capital of Pakistan-administered Kashmir, has already been facing a severe water shortage and a rise in temperature due to the diversion of River Neelam and felling of trees to construct Neelam Jhelum hydropower project, making the lives of the locals miserable. Shaukat Nawaz Mir, chairman of the Markazi Anjuman Tajiran, a traders association said, Islamabad has continued to maintain an oppressive attitude and has so far ignored their plight. Diversion will be done from there. You tell me that from Saran to Muzaffarabad, one river has been finished. When this river will be finished, then in this river, the effects of 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 the यहाँ पे रहना मुश्किल हो जाएगा लिहाजा मैं ये अपील करता हूँ इमरान खान साहब से कि खुदारा अपने मौकफ पे आए जो आपका मौकफ है जो आप पूरी दुनिया के आगे जो पेश कर रहे हैं उसी पे स्टैंड करें ये दोरा मैार छोड़ दें a massive protest was also held by locals and activists in Muzaffarabad earlier this week over the rampant destruction of natural resources and ecology in the illegally occupied region through the so-called development projects. The resentment in the occupied territories is high against both Islamabad and Beijing. Flash floods hit several provinces of Afghanistan in the past 24 hours, killing hundreds of people and wounding several, reports suggest. The dead toll from flash floods rose to 150 on Thursday as survivors and rescue workers combed through the debris of more than 1,500 homes that were destroyed in Parwan province north of capital Kabul. Flash floods hit several provinces of Afghanistan in the past 24 hours and over 110 people were killed and nearly 150 were wounded according to latest reports. The floods swept through Parwan province which borders capital Kabul in the early hours of Wednesday morning, washing away men, women and children and destroying 300 homes, according to Ministry of Disaster Management spokesman Tamim Azimi. Rescuers searched through mud throughout the day for bodies. On Thursday, the death toll of victims of flooding in the northern province of Parwan rose to 85, while more than 110 others were wounded. Footage shot by a local resident showed the aftermath of the floods, debris-stricken streets, excavators digging out mud and people standing on rooftops of homes. <laughs> Yeah, 
The disaster came as the war-torn nation already faces a sinking economy due to the coronavirus pandemic and as violence continues despite the United States attempting to forge peace talks between the Afghan government and insurgent Taliban. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Foreign Secretary Jayanath Kolumbij has said that Sri Lanka will always have an India-first approach as far as strategy security is concerned, seeking to ally concerns amid China's growing presence in the island nation. Sri Lanka's Foreign Secretary Jayanath Kolumbij has said that Sri Lanka will always have an India-first approach as its new regional foreign policy plank as far as strategic security is concerned. Admiral Kolumbij became the first-ever Foreign Secretary from a military background when he was appointed by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa to head the Foreign Ministry on August 14. In an interview with Daily Mirror on Wednesday, Columbia said Sri Lanka will not do anything harmful to India's strategic security interest as he saw to early concerns amid China's growing presence in the island nation. He said President Gotabaya Rajpaksa would have an India-first approach as the key to strategic security. Commenting on the Chinese investment in Sri Lanka's southern port of Hambantota, Columbia said that Sri Lanka had offered India Hambantota first. Sri Lanka had in 2017 handed over the Hambantota port to China on a 99-year lease. There are regional concerns that Beijing may make a military presence at Hambantota, located on a key international shipping route. The World Health Organization representative to Nepal, Dr. Jos Wandelayer, has said along with the increasing cases of COVID-19 infected persons in Nepal, the rate of death among the infected elderly persons would also soar. As of Thursday, the number of COVID-19 cases in the Himalayan nation reached 34,418, while the number of fatalities stands at 175. The World Health Organization or WHO representative to Nepal, Dr. Jos Wandelayer, has said, along with the increasing cases of COVID-19 in Nepal, the rate of death among the infected elderly persons would also soar. In an interview released by the Health Ministry earlier this week, Dr. Wanderlayer alerted that the death case among the elderly infected persons could increase in the Himalayan nation. He asserted until few months ago, COVID-19 cases were mostly reported from the Nepalese returning from abroad and as the number of returning Nepalese ran, the score of infected cases also declined. But lately, the COVID-19 cases have risen alarmingly and there is possibility of dire state due to the pandemic. This comes as local authorities in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley has already extended the prohibitory orders to curb the coronavirus spread until September. The Kathmandu Valley alone has reported over 300 cases of coronavirus. As of Thursday, the number of COVID-19 cases in Nepal reached 34,418 while the number of deaths due to the deadly infection stands at 175. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Incessant rainfall disrupts normal life in parts of India. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan invites Afghan peace chief for talks. And locals express anger over diversion of rivers in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.